Welcome to Fall Rise Give, a space where we invite you to dig into the real cause of your suffering. Looking at opportunities for growth with a change in your beliefs, thoughts, and actions so you can be your true self and be inspired. Join us as we explore life's ups and downs and navigate the twists and turns, sharing stories of resilience, hope, and the transformative power of giving back. Whether you're looking for a change, in recovery, or simply seeking inspiration, this podcast is your go-to for candid conversations, raw emotions, and a whole lot of heart. Tune in and discover how to fall, rise, and give back on life's extraordinary journey. Fall, rise, give. We are on a journey, my friends. You know, uh, I had the chance to talk to Kumar a little bit before we started our podcast this week, and we talked a little bit about the uh, the trip of a lifetime, basically, that was taken by Kumar and his family last week. You know, Kumar, can you hit on a couple of points? I know that we talked about we talked about a couple of things last week. It was for my son' uh, high school graduation and my daughter's college graduation, and so. We're going to talk a little bit about manifestation. My daughter's a manifestation rock star, and she uh, was going to go to Europe for three weeks, hit St. Sebastian, an island off the coast of uh, Spain, hit Mallorca, and then uh, she met my wife in Copenhagen and Amsterdam and Paris, and now my daughter's actually in Nice still, and Monaco and all those places. She's a master manifester, man, and so she gets everything that she kind of wants in life, and my son kind of gets left behind a lot. So I made sure that he also got a trip. So he and I flew out to London um, two weeks ago, two weeks ago today. And then we um, met my wife and my daughter in Amsterdam. And then we spent four days there. And then we went to Paris for three days as well. And so, yeah, it was a trip of a lifetime for those two, especially. First time my son had been out of the country. He's 18 years old. And uh, he and I really bonded. And this trip was really for him. And I think it's really about giving to people and giving to your closest relationships, in this case for me. Unfortunately, I had to work a few um, times, a few hours a day while I was there. But it was so worth it to actually get to spend that quality time with me and my son and then my wife. We actually had no arguments we had a little bickering between the kids, but my wife and I and the kids, we really had a blast. We went on a wine and cheese um, boat cruise. We went on the Paris and London bus tour. There's a toot bus tour. It's called toot, actually. And so uh, <laughs> we went on a bus tour to see the sights of the whole. And, uh, yeah, we did that in London. That was awesome. And then um, we found the same toot bus uh, across the street from the Louvre, the big museum in Paris. And we took right. a three-hour bus tour around Paris as well. That was just awesome. And the kids loved it, which was pretty pretty great. Don't you find that when you take one of those bus tours, that you find things that you would have never seen otherwise? When uh, Monique and I were in San Francisco earlier this year, we hopped on one of those buses and it had 12 stops and we took, we got off at a couple of the stops and just walked around and, you know, you get to hear all, you get to hear all of the touristy things that you can hear while you're going through. But then when you stop and get off, you get a chance to walk around and actually see, feel, and be a part of the history and the things that you're actually watching and talking about, you know, and seeing. Yeah, no, totally. And I think for us, it's the same kind of thing. You just never would expect like Moulin Rouge, right? It's this amazing theater slash famous thing in Paris. Um, it's like the the dancers in New York, the Rockettes, right? And so they have this Moulin Rouge uh, theater and would never have gone to go see it. But the bus went right past it. They talked about the Moulin Rouge. And so, yeah, it's, it's a, one of those things that I highly recommend for tourists. You can see a lot in a few hours by taking those bus tours, and then you can pick and choose where you want to spend the most of your time in. So I think doing touristy things and the bus tours really are worthwhile. So, yeah. I I, to I totally agree. So let's talk a little bit about you. You mentioned that your daughter's a master manifester, or ma master at manifestation. Did, did I say that? Right? Manifestation. Master at manif. Let's try saying that eight times fast. That's like a, <laughs> that's like a tongue twister. But I, I, I find that if... For me, a lot of times, if I if I'm thinking about something or wanting it or um, uh, 
desiring to to have or to do something, a lot of times for me it'll it'll work itself out by thinking about it a lot. And so is that kind of what your daughter is good at? Is she thinks about it and then she she takes actions to make it happen or she thinks about it and it just kind of happens for her? Yeah, no, I think it's I think there's always action required. Um I think for her um she puts it out to the universe and like I want to go on this European exchange program. So she studied abroad last year, Mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. Um, She studied in Paris for six weeks and then in Rome for six weeks. She traveled all over Europe. She wanted to make that happen. So she did that. She wanted to work for the Seattle Kraken, the hockey team, and an internship. She found a way to bug the heck out of those guys (laughs) to get the the, the interview. And she kept on being persistent. And then when we were in Mexico last year, she did the interview while she was traveling. And she sent them a big thank you email. None of the other girls that were interviewing for the job sent the thank you email. And she ended up getting this job. And she ended up hobsnobbing with some of the you know superstars in the hockey team in the NHL by doing that. And they just loved her because she's such a bubbly type A you know social butterfly. Mm-hmm. And so she's she made that happen. Um, she um, I have a bunch of stories around her and kind of how she does it. She uh, wanted to go to a private high school. We grew up, you know, you and I went to public high schools. My wife's mom is a teacher of public schools. That was always our plan was to take these kids to public schools. Mm -hmm. Somehow my daughter decided that in her mind, she wanted to go to a private high school. And I'm like, no, that's not going to happen. And at that particular time, um, she applied and she took the test to the private high school. She got accepted to the best high schools in Seattle area, the private ones. And um, I was unemployed at the moment. And I'm like, no way, this is not going to happen. I'm not going to pay $20,000 a year to go to private high school, especially when I'm not working. But um, she said, well, dad, you'll get a job. And I said, well, if I get this particular job, I was going to go work at T-Mobile. And I was like, in the final stages, she goes, if you get this job, do you think about it? I said, yes. Well, I ended up getting the job. And then she's like, well, you thought about it. Now I'm going to go to private school. So <laughs> that's the assumed, so, clo- that's the assumed close is what that is. <laughs> it's totally. Right. So I'm like, what? So I, I really couldn't say no to her on that. And so she ended up going to private high school. And so anyway, she's just, I think just some people just have this ability to go after what they want. Mm-hmm. They want bigger things than what some of us have. And they have this, we call this karma or luck or whatever. But some people are just masters at this. And she decided, she put a lot of pressure, even though she was abroad, she wanted to get a job after college. And this is a pretty tough economy right now, especially for young kids trying to get jobs in the, in the, the, especially in the tech sector. And she interviewed a ton of places. She got three offers. Two of them are hot startups with like billions of valuation. Mm-hmm. And she ended up getting a job and she wanted the job to start in August after her travels. She lands multiple offers, gets to pick and choose when she starts this job. So when she comes back from Europe, she's going to take a few weeks off, and then she's going to move to San Francisco and go work for this hot startup that's worth like $7 billion. Wow. I'm like, how does this girl keep doing it? She just keeps putting it to the universe, keeps working her tail off. She goes after it. She takes action. She's persistent. And so, yeah, she's a master manifester. That's kind of the, the thing in my family anyways. So here, here's, here's my takeaway from that. She takes action. And I think that a lot of times, you know, people say that, you know, some people are just lucky. Some people get everything that they want. But it sounds like in your daughter's case that she's a person that, you know, she may be lucky and she may have a a, a smart head on her shoulder, but she goes after what she wants. She doesn't just sit on her ass and do nothing to have it happen. She actually, you know, knows that she wants to go to a private high school and she, you know, she writes out a plan, you know, and then she makes that plan and attacks that plan and talks to her dad and gets, you know, gets in, wants a job, does this, you know, basically sets her, sets her steps and then goes ahead and and achieves those steps in order to get that goal. And I think that a lot of times, you know, the, the people that are manifesting all this good nature and all this good stuff are the people that are out there hustling and they're not sitting still and they're not letting dust form on their, you know, on their shoulders or however, however that's, that saying goes, they're actually getting out there and doing the action that needs to be taken in order to have the, you know, their goal achieved. Yes, totally true. Totally true. And somehow, somewhere, people need to take action. But 
let's talk about why don't they take action if they want a particular goal. So I think it is kind of, um, and as I mentioned, I was reading this book called Limitless by Jim Quick last couple of weeks. I'm at the last 20 pages of it. Okay. Still haven't finished it. Uh, but essentially, he's got a process for achieving limitless for the brain. But also, he's basically a behavioral psychologist, the way I look at it. The guy's got 100 million podcasts. Yeah, that's uh, what you said. Again, Jim Quick, Limitless. 100 million downloads of his podcast. So a super successful guy. He trains actors and Disney and, you know, Marvel folks and all those folks on how to be limitless. So his big thing is around three things in his methodology. One is mindset. If your mindset says that you can achieve something, you're more than halfway there or at least a third of the way there. Second is motivation. Motivation is really implied through passion and purpose. So it comes in through, I have a passion to do something that I like doing. She, my daughter wanted to travel, wanted to go to school, wanted to make the dean's list, whatever, right? So she had the motivation to do it. And then there's a method, method of taking action. She knew that she had to apply for jobs. She knew she had to network. She had to do all the resources. And so he talks about methods of learning how to work on your memory, learning how to be a better reader, learning how to focus, learning how to think, to be limitless. And so his tripod is mindset, motivation, and action, which is methods, right? How do you take the right action to achieve what you want to achieve? For me personally, if you can't believe you'll achieve something, you're not going to take action. Agree 100%. So if you've got to believe that you can get something done, only then will you go after the action. Now, this reminds me of a great book called Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill. I may have mentioned it on the previous podcast. Jim Quick read these same books, and I read these same books years ago, these classic of success and power of positive thinking and all of those books, right? In the book, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, he interviews tens and hundreds of people, successful millionaires in the 1930s and 40s or whatever the book was published in, early, mid-1900s. And he figures out what are the keys to success. And basically manifesting is how do you actually go about achieving success, right? Mm -hmm. That's really the definition of manifesting, getting what you want. And he said there are two things that are required. And he said he's not going to tell you what those two things are directly in the book. But by the end of the t you read the book, and I read that book two or three times, actually, because I really want to understand it. First thing was desire. You got to want something. To achieve whatever you want, you got to know what you want. Really important. Number two thing is belief with certainty that you're going to get it. If you believe you're going to go get it, then you got to take action. If you believe you can do something, if other people have done it, you can do it as well. And so one of the stories that I have looked at for success, and I don't know if he talked about it or if Anthony Robbins talked about it in his motivational book, but we all know Colonel Sanders, mm -hmm. the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? KFC is what we know it as today. Surprisingly, I saw a number of KFCs in London and in uh, Paris, which was whatever reason that my eyes are attracted to KFCs. Do you have a lot of them in Seattle? Do you have KFCs in Seattle? We have Seattle? one down the street. Yeah, we do. We do okay. have a few of those around. All right, because yeah. in, La in La Crosse, there are two, but I, it's one of those restaurants that I just drive by. I don't even notice, you know. Anyway, I didn't mean to yeah. sidetrack your story. So anyway, you, you No, but that's KFCs, you know, there's thousands of them. I guess they're huge in Japan. People love fried chicken in Asia. People love fried chicken everywhere. And so Colonel Sanders was like 67 years old super unsatisfied with his retirement savings or retirement and decided that he had this chicken recipe that he wanted to sell to people. And he wanted to not just open a restaurant. He wanted to sell the recipe based on profits. So he went around and he got like a thousand and seven no's before any, somebody agreed to it. He basically said, I'm going to give you this recipe and I want a percentage of the profits from your chicken sales that you get um, based on his recipes. So essentially, 
he took a thousand and seven no's or over a thousand, whatever that number was, but I remember it being a thousand and seven mm-hmm. no's before he got to a yes. And then now we know they've got tens of thousands of KFCs all over the world, where we are 50 years later, whatever it is. Right. So when you take action, are you willing to be persistent enough to be at that level, take a thousand and some no's? Most of us are not. So that's the key to manifesting is you keep plugging away, you keep kicking your nose, you keep persistent, but you got to kind of believe at the end of the day that you're going to achieve your goal. He believed then he conceived his thought, and then he actually went after it and made it happen. So that's kind of the key to manifestation is desire and then belief you're going to go get it, and then you got to take the action, right? That the action is the key component that you and I talked about a few minutes ago. All right. I know that manifestation is what this is about, but let me ask you this. Based on the Colonel Sanders story, if you were told no anytime more than two or three, would you have continued? Um. Uh, I have continued. I'll show you an example of manifestation myself. I uh, started a number of companies, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of them were – one was the first one of the food company that I had billionaires over for dinner that I told you about that I had to shut that down. But I had a number of no's. People didn't want my food or that I was selling, but I ended up selling enough to get you know, Schwann's Foods Corporation's uh, um, attention. The food was good, and I had a number of customers. But the biggest thing that I was able to manifest is this internet company that I founded in 1999 with two other co-founders. And for the first six to seven months, all we got were no's from investors. We talked to hundreds of investors at the time. 1999 was a crazy internet 1.0. There was no bubble at that point. Nothing had exploded yet. The market was hot. Seattle was booming. San Francisco was booming. There's internet companies coming out of your woodwork, every single thing. And so we got a ton of no's, but we kept on going after it. We finally got this company and said, we like your story. We like what you're doing, but you don't know how to tell the story. And then we developed our story and we got ourselves, locked ourselves in a room and said, we got to figure this out. What, what's our value proposition? We basically developed a presentation. And, but it took us seven, eight months of no's to realize that our story, how we're telling our story wasn't right. And once we figured that out, on November 3rd of 1999, we did a presentation and we got like 40 yeses. Oh, wow. We raised a million dollars in a matter of weeks right after that, days actually. But for seven months, we took no's. And then when we went out to sell our product to companies, I was the head of sales and business development. I got a ton of no's, but that's okay. Um, At least 50 no's at times, you know, one or two, once out of every 10 calls would somebody buy our product or whatever. And then um, we had a company that we, I cold called into um, out of Portland, Oregon. And I basically had the head of their operations on the phone for like an hour. And developed my skills to be able to communicate with her what I had to offer and what she had, what she needed, and was able to sell um, our product concept to her. And then my CEO believed much more than I did that he wanted to sell the company to these guys out of Portland, Oregon, this telecom company. And because he believed so much, he took the right action. He, I'm like, if you believe this, this is great. Mm-hmm. Let's go make it happen. I'll support you. I don't believe they're going to buy us, but I'm not going to get in your way. Right. I've seen crazy things happen in life. And sure enough, six months later, they wanted to invest in us. Or three months later, they wanted to invest in us. And then a year later, they ended up buying the company. And then it just it made us millionaires immediately. And it's just crazy how if once you believe something, you go after it, you take the right action, and you'll manifest it. But it takes a lot of no's. It takes a lot of heat to take no's. I didn't take a 1,007 no's. I probably took a hundreds of no's right. uh, from investors. And so, but I just learned and kept on applying. And that's... That's how we manifested it. You know, kind of we can take that story and then kind of tie it back to some of the other stories that we've told about in previous episodes about, you know, baby steps in doing things. And a lot of times it starts off with just a simple, you know, I will have a great day. Today will be a fantastic day. I, when Before we do a podcast, I think to myself, we're going to have the best podcast that we've had. Before I go into my job, I think to myself, this is going to be a great day. And on days that I don't think that, 
are days that kind of fall apart. So an example for me is, you know, I did, as you know, I'm a bartender and on days that I'm thinking, you know what, ah, oh, you know what, it's a beautiful day. I am tired. I don't want to go to work. I'd rather sit outside. I'd rather go on a motorcycle ride. I'd rather hop on the UTV and go, I'd go fish it, you know, want to do something other than to go out and work and be in front of people and do my job. On the days that I that I would rather be doing something else and don't think about you know the positiveness of going out and helping somebody and and just talking to them, being the bartender, those are days that I just have bad days. Not you know not terrible like you know I need to end it all days, but days that I just I I don't seem to do the job that I'm supposed to do for people. I don't listen well. I don't have good conversations. I don't you know try to make people laugh. Cause when, when I'm working, a lot of times I try to entertain as I'm, as I'm bartending, you know, try to listen as I'm bartending. And so if I go in with the attitude, yeah. like, Hey, this is going to be a great day. It ends up being a great day. But when I go in thinking, I really don't want to be to work today. It ends up being a not so good day. And so I think it all starts honestly with those little baby steps of you tell yourself you're going to do well. You tell yourself you're going to, knock it out of the park and your brain kind of puts you in the situation to have that happen. And you know, everything starts with our values. You value pride in what you do. You value connection with people. You value certain things. Everybody values certain things, right? Yep. I value growth, personal growth. I value success ambition. I value adventure to a certain degree. I value nature. Our values determine our belief systems. Our beliefs are based on past experiences and our ability to take our thoughts to a level of recognition of what our values are. So beliefs determine your thoughts If you believe you're not going to achieve certain things in life, you're not going to go after it. Let's take the example of this podcast. It's a big undertaking. We're on our 14th episode. I believed we could do something different to help other people. So based on that, I had this thought based on the values of helping people. We had this thought. We've developed it over. Now we've taken action. And now we're able to go promote it through whatever means that we're promoting it through. We're actually actualizing our dream or what we're going after. We're not seeing the hundred millions of visitors yet, but everybody started small, right? Mm -hmm. So nobody started on day one. KFC didn't start out with thousand stores opening on day one. They started out with one guy buying the recipe and selling the chicken. So that's the key. So our values determine our beliefs. Our beliefs determine our thoughts. Our thoughts determine our actions. Our actions, once taken enough of them and not giving up at that last minute, that last minute before the miracle happens, Mm -hmm. determine our results. And those results, it's a cycle, right? You get one result, you see some positive, you get one sales call, that one customer buys a product, and you go after the next one, and you go after the next one. And so, yeah, your your manifestation is really believed based on your values, your belief system, your thoughts, your actions, which end up getting you the results that you want. Now, how does this all tie into our theme of our podcast, and how does it all tie into our our um, our purpose of fall, rise, and give? It's all about that, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's what we're talking about it today. So you just mentioned fall, rise, give, and I was talking to a guy yesterday that owns a. a, a a bunch of businesses and he's franchising them out. And, and he said that the name of your podcast and the name of your website is fall rise. Give. I said, absolutely. He goes, you guys hit on the exact title and the exact thoughts that everybody that's, that owns businesses deals with, you know, cause everybody that has a business or everybody that's trying to start off a business falls because, you know, you, you start, as you mentioned, you know, you've got your, you know, you get a little bit of success and you're feeling good about yourself and then you fall and then you pick yourself back up and you rise. And as you rise, you're thinking to yourself, how can I grab, a, you know, the person below me and help to pull them up? And that's, that's your give. So, I mean, he said that your business or that your podcast and the name of it 
is fantastic just for that. You know, that it's it, it's what every single person that owns a business and every person that's just successful in life is achieve is is trying to achieve is what your title is. So I mean, I, I so I, I want to give you kudos for that for coming up with just a uh, a really cool name and a great. I've been trying to live by by the name of our podcast since we've started. I mean, yeah. I think I I think I tried to prior to the starting of the podcast and prior to our our re reemergence of friendship and stuff. But I but I think now that I now that it's there and it's part of my everyday life that I try to, that I'm trying to be a better person now, just, be, just through the podcast. <laughs> Does that sound weird? No, it sounds totally in sync with the, what the universe wants, right? So we're not talking about God for a moment. We're talking about the universe for a second. The universe brought us together because we're both of the similar vibration level, similar energies. We both like to talk. We both are good, positive people. We talked about success, but this didn't really come to me. Or I'm like, oh, let's come up with a cool name, Fall Rise Give. I was listening to a song by U2 the band, and the song was called The Fly. And it says, man must fall, the man must rise, or man must rise and the man must fall. That song was an inspiration. But at the end of the day, the title of the podcast is Fall Rise Give, but there's a thing about turning struggles into opportunities. We all have struggles. Those struggles are unique to us. Those are opportunities for growth for us to become our true self. And then we're able to give back. We get purpose by when we give to others. That guy has started a business. He's giving to other people better deals and better, you know, whatever products that he's selling. And in turn, people are giving him money for it. So, giving is how we get our purpose. And that's one of the things we talked about the seven chakras. The last one we talked about was abundance, right? And so now we're going to put this in action and saying, okay, this is what this is about. When you give, when you give through your purpose to help others, it may be a business. You're giving people a product or service. You give them a product or service. Hopefully they'll pay you cash for it or whatever monetary value that you need. And that's the cycle of life in a way. So you're right. I'm, it's very fulfilling to hear that what he said about the name, because I think it comes from ether, right? Universe came up with the name. We just happen to be the channels for it, the way I think of energies or whatever. So I appreciate that. I I think that's a very inspiring story about this guy liking the name of the, the podcast. And I hope our listeners recognize that this is what we're talking about. We're, BSing with Kumar and Bob about how to make, <laughs> take baby steps to be successful and manifesting what we want in our life, right? That's kind of what it's right. all about. Well, let's, you know, I'd like to invite our listeners to reach out to us. You know, you can do that on our website, which is fallrisegive.com. But I'd also like to invite our listeners to invite their friends that think that they think will enjoy the podcast. I know that, that you and I have, you know, told our, our friends and our family about it and, you know, posted it on Facebook and whatnot, but it, it would be nice if, you know, the people that are listening to us on a regular basis, if they would invite their friends to listen to the podcast. And also if they've got any ideas on things that they'd like us to talk about, to let us know about that, or if they, you know, they think that they would be a good guest and they might have some, you know, inspiration that they can share with some of our listeners as well. Yeah, totally agree. And people are doing that already, Bob. I, I told you about the woman that posted it to the WhatsApp groups as part of the Attitude Adjustment Program. I have another friend um, at work uh, through somebody else. She passed it on to. She's like, oh, I recognize that voice. That voice is of Kumar, <laughs> right? All right. And so people are doing it. We'd love the people to do it more often. We'd also love people to leave reviews on Apple Podcasts or on other podcast platforms that they're on, please, you know, give us a rating, give us a review. Um, we're here to make this podcast relatable for you to, for you to spend those 25, 30 minutes a week and make the world a better place, inspiring you, inspiring us to make the world a better place. Positive energy is what we're here about. Passing it on little by little, little tools. And hopefully we'll provide you enough tools. Like we thought about today, you know, manifesting, you can make it happen, but, Action will come once you start to believe and conceive in your mind that what you want something, desire and belief that you'll get it, and now take the action and you will get it. So, anyway, that's kind of uh, what this is all about, and I'm super inspired by it. 
That's why I get up in the morning um, every day to do what I need to do to apply these principles in my life. I want to live this life of thriving uh, rather than a numb life when I was drinking alcohol and, you know, drinking pretty much all every night to live a numb life. Instead, uh, I quit drinking about nine and a half months ago and um, living an inspired life and helping people in recovery or people not in recovery, people who want to just thrive and be inspired, people who are stuck in a particular place in life who want to live a a thriving life of their dreams. It doesn't have to happen today, but you know what? If you follow these principles on a daily basis, um, a year from now, you could be living a, a totally different life or 10 years from now just by taking baby steps. You know what? Go out and manifest great things. And start with baby steps. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Fall Rise Give, where we explore stories of resilience, growth, and giving back. If you enjoyed today's episode, please visit our website at www.fallrisegive.com. Also consider subscribing to our podcast on your favorite platform and leaving us a review. Your feedback helps us to continue to bring you inspiring stories. Stay tuned for our next episode. And remember, every fall is a chance to rise and every rise is an opportunity to give. Until next time, keep falling, rising, and giving. This is Fall Rise Give, produced by podcastforhire.com. Thank you for listening.